Hello, my name is Gary Shoniger. I'm the author and course creator of the Ice House Entrepreneurship Program. The project was developed through a partnership with the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation and the Entrepreneurial Learning Initiative. This webinar is recorded live at the Kaufman Foundation in Kansas City. In the first half of this presentation, I'll discuss some of the challenges we face in terms of how we currently define entrepreneurship, both from an academic as well as an economic development perspective. I will also share some of the research we have uncovered in the hopes that it may help inform your vision for encouraging and supporting entrepreneurship in whatever capacity that may be. In the second half, I will describe the Ice House Entrepreneurship Program, the course content, structure, outcomes, target audience, as well as pricing and delivery options. So we all understand the entrepreneurial imperative the need to encourage and support entrepreneurial activities at all levels of our society. Yet, how do we define entrepreneurship in a way that will enable us to accomplish this goal? In the past, entrepreneurs were often looked upon as mavericks or fringe players who bucked the system. Their abilities were largely ignored. Others looked at entrepreneurs as mythical, larger-than-life figures who were possessed with rare abilities. Their decision-making process was once thought of as a scientifically unfathomable mystery. Today, entrepreneurs have become the engines that are now driving our economies. In fact, entrepreneurs are now responsible for all net job growth. Even beyond the direct economic implications, policymakers are beginning to recognize the value and the impact of entrepreneurial thinking within all aspects of our society. Yet, while much is known about business management and the inner workings of large corporations, the entrepreneurial process is still not well understood. And this lack of understanding is limiting our ability to teach entrepreneurship in terms of efficacy, scalability, and scope. Much of our efforts are focused on high-growth entrepreneurship a perspective that often leads to what I'll call a plan-and-pitch approach that looks something like this. Typically, there's a tech-centric bias. Students are encouraged to come up with ideas with obvious high-growth potential. They're asked to develop business plans, conduct in-depth market research, complete with financial projections, and investor presentations. High-growth entrepreneurship is important. Yet this plan-and-pitch approach does not accurately reflect the process that a typical entrepreneur undertakes. In fact, among the 600,000 or so new businesses that are created each year in the United States, less than 2% receive institutional investment at their inception. Others tend to confuse entrepreneurship with small business management. They view entrepreneurship as if a startup were simply a smaller version of a large company, and they tend to prescribe small business management rather than entrepreneurial skills. Those who express an interest in starting a business are encouraged to conduct market research, write a business plan, learn about finance and accounting, marketing and sales, legal structures, and pursue bank financing. These skills are important for managing an existing business that has customers and cash flow, yet they're not all that helpful when it comes to the entrepreneurial process. The problem here is that entrepreneurship is not management. And while these skills are important for managing an existing business, they do not accurately reflect the process, the mindset, or the skills that enable entrepreneurs to succeed. And while the image of the high-growth entrepreneur may capture our imagination, when we look at the research, a very different picture begins to emerge, one that reveals a disconnection between what we are currently teaching and what entrepreneurs are actually doing. One study in particular conducted by a man named Amar Bidet, finds that carefully planned venture-backed startups are by far the exception rather than the rule. Looking at hundreds of successful startups, Bidet reveals a profile that seems to defy common sense. He found that a typical company is not founded on new innovations or breakthrough technology. 
he found that the entrepreneurs themselves were not doing much formal planning or in-depth market research. He also found that rather than institutional investment, the median startup capital for an Inc. 500 company was about $10,000, cobbled together from credit cards, second mortgages, friends, fools, and family. Perhaps most surprising of all, he discovered that the founders themselves had little or no experience in their chosen field. In fact, 40% had no experience at all. So when we look at this profile, it seems to defy common logic and reason. And it also perpetuates the myth of the entrepreneur as the individual possessed with rare abilities. And I would also like to point out that among the companies featured in this study were companies like Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, Walmart, and Waste Management. We now recognize that even large established companies have what Bidet refers to as humble improvised origins. Even entrepreneurs like Sam Walton and Bill Gates initially pursue highly uncertain niche opportunities without much capital, experience, research, or breakthrough technologies. And rather than writing business plans and pitching investors, they learn to survive through a process of opportunistic adaptation, through interaction and observation, experimentation and adaptation, skills that are very different from those required for managing an existing business with a known product or service. To better illustrate this point, we'll borrow from a concept known as transformation theory, which was introduced by a man named Dr. George Land to describe the nature of change in any natural system. In this theory, Dr. Land suggests that there are three distinct phases of growth, which are illustrated here by the three columns. Each of these three phases is interrupted by a breakpoint, a moment in time where the rules for survival change. Phase one can be described as the search phase. In this phase, the system attempts to find a connection with its environment. Here, the system must learn to function in a highly uncertain environment with very limited resources. The rules for survival here include interaction and observation, experimentation and adaptation. The system is naive and it doesn't know what it doesn't know. It requires curiosity and creativity, critical thinking and effective problem-solving skills. They also require engagement the ability to find and synthesize knowledge to experiment and try new things. Assuming this connection is found, the first breakpoint is reached. This is the point where the system makes a connection with its environment. It is important to point out that, as humans, the way we connect with our environment is by creating something useful. And in most cases, we measure usefulness with some form of currency. This is the essence of entrepreneurial thinking. The assumption that we can empower ourselves by creating something useful for others. This is a basic understanding of entrepreneurship that anyone can embrace. It is also a departure from the way most of us have been taught to think. It is a shift in perspective that can empower anyone regardless of their circumstances, abilities, or chosen field. And it can be applied in any situation, from the creation of new businesses to intrapreneurship and workforce development. After all, as an entrepreneur, we connect with our environment by creating something useful. And we know whatever it is we are offering is useful when people begin to buy whatever it is we're selling. At this point, we begin to recognize that we have, in fact, developed something useful. We now have evidence that other people value whatever it is we are offering. At this point, we are beginning to understand who is buying our product or service and why. We have essentially validated our concept with evidence that an opportunity exists. And once we reach this break point, the rules for survival change from experimentation to replication. 
the system must stop the search process and begin capitalizing on the connection it has found. This phase is governed by managerial skills that enable the system to grow by replicating the success it has discovered. This requires careful planning, processes, and procedures that are focused on replication and efficiency and improvement. The rules for survival are formulaic and often require specialized knowledge and expertise. They also require compliance and conformity a workforce that is willing to adhere to these procedures in order for the system to grow. And this environment is much less ambiguous or uncertain. And as the system grows, the uncertainty is reduced while access to resources begins to increase. As the growth continues, a second breakpoint will eventually occur as the environment will inevitably change. Here the growth begins to stall as the result of the changing environment as the system begins to fade into obsolescence. These changes can be brought about by new technologies, increased competition, shrinking relevance, commoditization, scarcity of resources, or regulatory changes, things that are generally beyond our control. Here again, the rules for survival change and the system must become open to innovation in response to the changing environment. Yet these systems are often entrenched and change is often met with hubris, arrogance, and denial, the assumption of complete knowledge or a tendency to cling to old ideas while ignoring evidence that the environment has, in fact, begun to change. And if this condition persists, the system will eventually die. Ideally, the system will acknowledge the change, and a new S-curve begins as the system begins to reinvent itself. Here, the system becomes open to innovative changes and new ideas that were often rejected in Phase 2. At this stage, the system cannot afford to pursue highly uncertain niche opportunities. It must focus its efforts on large-scale initiatives that are well-planned and carefully chosen. Here, the system has enjoyed long periods of growth and now has access to substantial resources, which can be used to reduce the uncertainty. They rely on the coordinated efforts of engineers and researchers, marketing and sales teams, experienced managers with industry knowledge and expertise, circumstances that are very different from phase one. In the past, we ignored entrepreneurs. Within a thriving industrial economy, our focus was here in phase two, and these were the rules for survival. We expected to work within systems that were focused on management and growth. We assumed that we would work in established organizations and that we would be governed by policies and procedures that were designed to maximize productivity and efficiency. We assumed that we would work within a system where someone else would figure out how to create value, and we would do what we were told. And our system of education was designed to foster this mindset and develop these skills, to create a workforce that could fit within this system. Yet we now recognize that the world has changed and many of these assumptions no longer apply. We must recognize that the rules for survival have also changed and that it has become essential for each of us to reinvent ourselves. These are the rules for survival. They are the skills required for anyone to survive in today's rapidly changing, highly uncertain environment. Albert Einstein once said that we cannot solve problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. We need to recognize that the entrepreneurial process is different from the managerial process. We must recognize that a startup cannot be treated as a smaller version of a large corporation and that the skills required to manage an existing business are different from those required to identify and evaluate new opportunities. We must also realize the implications of understanding and embracing an entrepreneurial mindset beyond the scope 
of new business creation. Entrepreneurship can simply be defined as the opportunity discovery process. The process of searching for the intersection of our individual talent, interest, and abilities and the needs of our fellow human beings. This is a simple definition that anyone can embrace. It is not a scientifically unfathomable mystery. It does not require great inventions or breakthrough technologies. It does not require formal planning and in-depth market research. It does not require access to rich relatives or venture capital investors. It does not require special talent, unique abilities, or an Ivy League MBA. Nor is it limited to startups and small business creation. Entrepreneurship begins with a mindset, a mindset that exposes opportunities and ignites ambition. It's a mindset that requires curiosity and creativity, a willingness to experiment and to try new things. It's a mindset that requires critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and the ability to solve real-world problems. And it's a mindset that can empower anyone regardless of their circumstances, interest, or chosen field. In today's world, entrepreneurship is a mindset every student needs. Which is why we created the Ice House Entrepreneurship Program, to provide a framework for understanding and implementing an entrepreneurial mindset. The course name was inspired by the life story of Pulitzer nominee Clifton Talbert and the entrepreneurial insight he gained from an unlikely entrepreneur as he came of age in the segregated South. The course was designed to accomplish four basic things. It was designed to inspire and engage a broad range of students, from young adults to higher education and workforce development, in the fundamental aspects of entrepreneurial thinking and the limitless opportunities it can provide. It was designed as an experiential program, one that would immerse students in real-world, resource-constrained, ambiguous circumstances that would enable them to develop entrepreneurial skills. It was designed to build a bridge from the classroom to the community, one that would encourage students to identify and interact with entrepreneurial people within their own community, those that can provide critical guidance and support. And lastly, it was designed as a scalable solution, one that would not require the instructor to be a subject matter expert in the field of entrepreneurship. So here's how it works. The curriculum is designed to address a few basic questions. How does an ordinary person, those with no particular advantage in life, manage to identify, evaluate, and bring to life a new opportunity? What is the process the mindset and the skill set that enables them to succeed, regardless of their circumstances. Drawing on more than 10 years of research, including more than 300 hours of on-camera interviews with successful everyday entrepreneurs, we've identified eight fundamental concepts, the building blocks of entrepreneurial thinking and process that drive the course curriculum. We begin with the power to choose as the foundation of entrepreneurial thinking. Life is not a lottery. The ability to choose the way we respond to our circumstances is fundamental to an entrepreneurial mindset. Using real-world examples, participants learn to recognize how choices rather than circumstances ultimately shape our lives. Two is about the ability to recognize problems as potential opportunities. Here we introduce the idea that anyone can empower themselves by solving problems for other people. Three is about taking action. Entrepreneurs are action-oriented, and they must learn to test their ideas in the real world. Four is about knowledge. Entrepreneurs are self-directed, lifelong learners who understand the power of knowledge combined with effort. These three concepts represent the core of the entrepreneurial process. Five is about basic financial literacy and speaks to the realization that our desire to appear wealthy and our ability to create wealth are often at odds with one another. Six is about building a brand, of creating a reputation for being reliable and delivering on one's promise. Seven is about creating a success community. 
surrounding oneself with others who are on or have been on a similar journey and can provide critical encouragement and support. And lesson eight is about the power of persistence. Entrepreneurship is not a get-rich-quick formula, and expecting it to be easy is a mistake. At the end of the day, it is often sheer persistence rather than luck or circumstances that wins the day. So the first four concepts are foundational, while the top four speak to sustainability. More detailed information about these core concepts is available in the PDF course description that is available on our website. So the second aspect of the course structure is the focus on the mindset. There is no clear path to success as an entrepreneur. There is no formulaic, one-size-fits-all approach. Yet there is a common logic or mindset, a common set of beliefs and assumptions that drive the behavior that enable entrepreneurs to succeed. And it is a mindset that transcends circumstances, socioeconomics, and culture. It is a fundamental logic that can be applied in any circumstances and can empower anyone to succeed. The third aspect of our course structure is that we leverage technology. Each lesson begins with narrated chalkboard presentation, an online lecture that combines basic bullet point text and graphic illustrations with short video segments featuring the firsthand testimony of successful real-world entrepreneurs. And rather than focus on high-growth entrepreneurs, the featured interviews reflect a broad range of everyday entrepreneurs, ordinary people who have accomplished extraordinary things by embracing an entrepreneurial mindset. Students learn from entrepreneurs like Brian Scudamore, who transformed $1,000 in a simple idea into 1-800-GOT-JUNK, a global company with more than 300 locations worldwide. They will learn from Susana Cabrera, who transformed a simple idea from her kitchen table into a nationally recognized brand. They will learn from Rodney Walker, who will describe the mindset that empowered him to transform a life of poverty and despair to becoming a graduate student at Yale. In addition to these narrated chalkboard presentations, each lesson also includes multiple choice lesson reviews that help ensure knowledge comprehension discussion topics designed to foster peer-to-peer -peer dialogue, reflection and response assignments that encourage self-analysis and personal application of the core concepts, and application assignments designed to immerse students in real-world entrepreneurial experiences that will help them develop entrepreneurial skills. So the fourth aspect of our course structure is problem-based learning. Drawing from the work of Alexander Osterwalder's business model canvas, we've developed what we call the Icehouse Opportunity Discovery Canvas. It's a simple document designed to facilitate the opportunity discovery process. Think of it as a semi-sophisticated cocktail napkin, a place for students to document their initial assumptions around a problem or need they have identified. So here's how that works. Working in small groups or individually, students are asked to identify a problem or need and to propose a solution. They are then asked to document their initial assumptions by addressing the fundamental questions within each square. They are asked to briefly describe their idea, the problem that it solves, the solutions that are currently available, and how their solution will be different. The answers to these basic questions provide a framework that documents their initial idea as a working hypothesis, a set of assumptions that they will then seek to validate in the real world. And rather than conducting in-depth market research or writing business plans, students are encouraged to get out of the classroom and validate their ideas in the real world to interact with potential customers, those whose problems they intend to solve. The objective is to determine if they have, in fact, identified a real problem or need and to test the viability of their solution. Throughout the course, students are constantly encouraged to search for a problem-solution fit through the process of interaction and observation, experimentation, and adaptation. 
The canvas encourages an iterative, experimental process whereby students are constantly analyzing and adapting their ideas based on what they are learning. And their canvas should be constantly changing as it reflects the evolution of the opportunity discovery process. This process of self-directed problem-based learning encourages students to start where they are with what they have and who they know. The objective is to prove their concept in real-world, resource-constrained, ambiguous circumstances. This problem-based learning approach is an accurate representation of the process that enables entrepreneurs to recognize and evaluate new opportunities. The Opportunity Discovery Canvas is also used to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer learning. Each week, students are encouraged to share their discovery process with their fellow students. So the fifth and final aspect of the course structure is community engagement. The course is designed to build a bridge from the classroom to the community, and students are encouraged to identify and interact with local entrepreneurs who can become guest speakers as well as mentors and advisors who can provide critical guidance and support. So there's a brief description of the course structure. And I'd like to discuss now some essential learning outcomes from an academic perspective. The course is designed to help students develop critical and creative thinking, problem solving, inquiry and analysis, lifelong learning, oral and written communication, civic engagement, and teamwork. From a small business development perspective, the course is designed to help students identify and evaluate entrepreneurial opportunities understand the process that enables entrepreneurs with limited resources to transform a simple idea into a sustainable success. Understand and apply fundamental aspects of an entrepreneurial mindset and identify and interact with local entrepreneurs within their own communities. The course is designed to be delivered in three basic formats. Traditional delivery. Here the video chalkboards are consumed in the classroom. Students receive a copy of the book as well as a student workbook. This is most commonly used where the students are not likely to have computer or internet access outside of the classroom. Next, and most commonly used, is the blended delivery, where the students view the video chalkboard outside of the classroom on their own time at their own pace. This blended option leaves classroom time for lesson review, peer-to-peer -peer discussions, student presentations, and guest lectures. For blended delivery, each student receives a course pack that includes a copy of the book, a student workbook, and a unique passcode that enables them to access the online course materials. The course can also be facilitated entirely online. For example, Kent State University is currently offering the program as a three-credit-hour course delivered entirely online. The course can be delivered as a full-semester three-credit-hour course, a 10-week seminar-style delivery, or as a five-week intensive course. Within an academic application, the course can be implemented as an introduction to entrepreneurship, a first-year experience class, or as a general education requirement. From a small business development perspective, the course has proven to be very effective for startup entrepreneurs as well as small business owners who want to grow. The cost per student ranges from $100 to $200, depending on method of delivery and number of students enrolled. Course materials can be purchased through a school bookstore or directly online. In order to implement this program, instructors must complete a two-day facilitator training program at the Kauffman Foundation in Kansas City. Our next available training is October 21st through 24th. More information about the training, including a complete list of locations and dates, is available on our website at whoownstheicehouse.com. Entrepreneurship is more than an academic discipline and its implications reach far beyond traditional enterprise creation. Entrepreneurship is a mindset. It is a mindset that can empower ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things. And in today's world, it's a mindset 
every student needs.